Hello, my name is Zahan Kashyap and I'm a 14-year-old teenager currently based out of New Delhi, India. I'm a passionate and focused student who represents the growing population of students worldwide who have special needs. I feel strongly about and I'm deeply committed to giving back to the community that has enabled me to be who I am today. I'll be reading out my essay titled Joie de Vivre, which literally translated from French means joy of life. So here we go. Joie de Vivre. A quote oft repeated by my mother that best exemplifies me today is by the all-time great Muhammad Ali. If my mind can conceive it and my heart can believe it, then I know I can achieve it. While I heard this repeatedly throughout my childhood, it took me well over a decade to internalize and understand why it resonated so deeply with me. Stranded in the midst of challenges from an early age, it took me years of grueling therapy, combined with my innate resilience and passion to become someone beyond my limitations. To give you a perspective, I was born extremely premature with a condition called periventricular leukomalacia, PVL, a form of cerebral palsy. Handing over a bleak medical diagnosis, the doctors informed my anxious parents that I would never be able to sit up and would be lucky if I had a vocabulary of 400 words. Such a limitation wouldn't even allow me to write 10 different phrases, let alone encapsulate my life in this essay. Yet, fighting all odds, I somehow managed to exceed everyone's expectations as each year passed. When I was merely seven years old, I had a major leg surgery, after which I had to learn to walk all over again. I can vividly remember the days preceding the surgery. It started out as a regular week. Like any seven-year-old, my eyes were glued to the television screen when my mother came in to talk to me. As she broke the news about my upcoming surgery, she commended me for being brave and explained how my gait would improve tremendously as a result of the surgery. Oh, this is so cool. I'd probably get chocolates and gifts as a reward for being brave, was all I thought, blissfully unaware of what lay ahead. While my parents tried to explain the nuances of what, what was coming, I honestly did not fully comprehend what was happening. Looking back, I even remember enjoying being wheeled into the operating theater. Yet, as soon as we entered the, the sterilized room, I distinctly remember the fear that suddenly struck my heart, realizing I was without my parents in a room full of strangers. Before the fear could take hold of me, the anesthesia calmly put me to sleep. When I woke up, aside from a dull ache in my left foot, the epicenter of my surgery, my legs were completely numb. The six months following my surgery were by far the toughest time I have ever endured in my life. Initially, with a prolonged leave from the monotony of school, I was eager to receive friends and family laden with gifts. Even when I commenced school, a few months later, the novelty of the situation did not wear off. As I was wheelchair bound and surrounded by friends, and classmates wanting to write in my cast and wheel me around school. In fact, I felt like a major celebrity with the power to pick and choose who would get to write on my cast. Soon, my physiotherapy session started and that was when my problems actually began. I had to relearn to walk one painful step at a time all over again. I've had delayed milestones all my life and a different gate too. But I was oblivious to it. After all, that was the only way I knew how to walk. However, this was an entirely new ball game. Even though it sounds simple at the forefront, unlike my peers, my foot did not go in front of the other in a nonchalant rhythm. As I endured the pain, the negativity sprouted, sprouting inside me spread beyond the session. I hated my parents for making me go through so much pain. And most of all, I hated my body. Feeling trapped in my own body, I couldn't stand the pain of doing therapy every day while my friends romped and played. 
to rub salt in the wound. Despite all the pain and hard work I put in, there was no perceptible difference in my work. As time passed, even the excitement of writing on my cast gradually wore off with my peers. For the first time in my life, I hated being different. Trapped within my body, I was tired of kids walking up to me to ask why I couldn't walk, or worse still, be at the receiving end of the look and look away glance. That was more common amongst adults and older children. Unable to express my frustration with my therapist and teachers, I channeled my anger, burning imaginary holes in the walls and floors I silently stared at. With my parents, however, my aggression knew no bounds. I raved and taunted, blaming them for my predicament with increasing vengeance. My frustration overflowed into breakfast one day with my visiting grandmother. I passionately described my disappointment about fighting a losing battle in the unfairness of having parents who forced me to continue with a painful therapy that was not helping me walk. I couldn't help but despise the circumstances that led me to this point and made me believe that I could never walk again. In response, my grandmother simply quoted Henry Ford, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Taken aback, I stopped midstream. Was I indeed living a self-fulfilling prophecy of being trapped? After hitting rock bottom, did I stand to lose anything by changing my vitriolic outlook? I decided to take baby steps and began approaching my therapy with the assumption that I would overcome my limitations, setting small goals. I redefined what success looked like every day. Once, one small step till the adjacent wall, till the door, till the gate, climbing one staircase, navigating one classroom, keeping count of my victories. I celebrated the positive momentum that helped me eat the proverbial elephant in bite-sized pieces. After hundreds of hours of perseverance, I, I was walking on my own with the wheelchair no longer in sight. As my physical proneness improved, so did my confidence. Even though I will never represent my country in an Olympic marathon, I take utmost uh, pleasure in recollecting the memories of my journey and creating a path for the way ahead. Why, with my rage extinguished with time, I can now admit that the push of my parents, without the push of my parents, I would still be lying in bed, trapped in my body. Re reflecting on every task I undertake, I realize that of all the things I do today are variations of learning to walk again. Even though I stumble and fall off it, I accept it as a process that will repeat itself throughout the course of my life. Being fortunate enough to have the recollection of learning to walk again, I not only learn the value of patience and consistency, but also having the right attitude to play the, the cards that life will deal me. The frustration of being trapped in my body made me realize I cannot con control the inevitable problems that will that I will face. However, I can always control my attitude, attitude towards dealing and moving forward to them. No longer being held captive within the recess of my mind by my attitude, my pristine walls lack any evidence of the holes I want in my imaginary childhood bedroom those many moons ago. Thank you.